Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. It's great to see you all. We're with Michelle Fabrega, our love connection. And uh, John is my love connection. How are you, John? <laughs> I'm in love with all three of us. That's what I think. Uh, hey, uh, Michelle, um, I had a situation that I remember from long ago. And it was, I was, it's back how long ago it was, as we were dating. And um, it wasn't my wife I was dating at the time. This is how long ago it was. And I remember this particular girl kept talking about, she was unloading her, her cares and troubles. And I started to give her advice. And I realized. <laughs> It wasn't whether my advice was good or bad. What I realized at the time was she really didn't want any advice. She just wanted to unload her cares. And you knew that because she never married you. <laughs> <laughs> Among other reasons, yeah. Right. Um, so here's the thing about advice. Unsolicited advice can be good or bad. Advice can be good or bad. Sometimes you just should shut up and not give advice. You should not offer advice. Now, that's something I learned a long time ago, which probably enabled me to get married. Um, <laughs> but the question is, is, does that ring true across the board for everybody? When, when should you not give advice? Offering advice is a tricky, tricky thing. Yeah, and and yeah, I, and I wanna um, clarify it too. We're talking about like personal advice, like around, you know, friendships and love and things like that. We're not talking about like medical, legal, tax, right? Oh, Obviously right. there's a place for those things, right? But yes. given that we're talking to me, <laughs> yeah. love and relationship um, issues. So yeah, I think it's a great question because I, what part, it's basically problematic. I would say in most cases, offering advice is problematic. And one of the first things to notice about that is like, why are you offering advice? So usually what's going on, I'm imagining, is that somebody is troubled and it's bothering you that they're troubled. And maybe it's bothering you more than it's bothering them that you want to fix it. You want it to change. You want them to stop being upset or concerned about something. So you kind of like want to make it go away. I mean, that's not the only reason people give advice, but that could be one of the reasons. And that's a good reason. If that's your reason, that's really good to check. Like, whoa, you know, wait a second. Is this for me or for them? Good point. Good point. Yeah. There are people who are giving advice to everybody about everything. <laughs> you know, I found out uh, uh, when I was uh, running uh, uh, companies uh, of uh, 40 and 50 people or I had a division or something that I was running. Uh, uh, I, I took some training, I forget with whom, but uh, I got into the habit of if there was some advice I wanted to offer, I always ask permission of the person. I mean, I'm talking about, um, I'd like to offer some, with your permission, I'd like to, uh, to uh, suggest something to you. The yeah. word advice wasn't always in there. And right. Suggestion. Generally, yeah. it, generally it was because they were doing something that wasn't getting to the objective of our division or our company or they were doing things that were upsetting and annoying other employees. And that was really what it got most into because they were, and, and some of the times they did it on, were doing it knowingly, other times they were doing it unknowingly. But it seemed yeah. that the key, and I never ran into any serious conflict, and I never ran into something where somebody said no, because then they were the curious, and they were, because they gave me permission to bring up the topic, then if they didn't like what I was saying, they could be upset about it and say something about that or say, I disagree with you. But yeah. it wasn't that they were mad because I gave them unsolicited advice. So yes. it seems that the, the difference is between solicited and unsolicited advice and how you give it. Have you found that to be true, Michelle? Yeah, I think, I mean, asking for permission is key before you do that. And so I would say that's, that's great. That's great advice. <laughs> Ask for permission <laughs> before you give advice. So I think that also we can frame it. I mean, it depends on the situation you're talking about. Um, what made me think of it is that we're almost like sharing our ideas about something. 
So, you know, we can hear somebody struggle with some decision or whatever, and you can say, well, you know, I have some ideas about that. Would that be helpful for me to share them? So you're kind of like not saying, you know, because to me, advice can, can come across as like kind of a one up, one down, and it can create a dynamic in a relationship that doesn't really go well over time. So, because, I mean, how could you possibly know the next right step for that person? I mean, sometimes we have more, you know, wisdom in, in life and experiences, but it to, it to short circuit their own decision making and their own uncertainty is kind of to deprive them for, of developing their own capacity to make good choices for themselves and to feel good about their choices. So that's that's something that can be uh, problematic. And also, you know, you end up being, you know, then you're the person that they have to go, they might go to and, oh, geez, now I have to always rely on so-and-so to get, to be able to move forward in life. And then it just creates something that maybe a dependency you don't want, or also, like I said, it doesn't help them develop their own um, muscles to do it. Yeah. Michelle, it sounds a little bit um, to me like um, the difference between uh, friendly advice, amateur advice, and a working with a professional. Um, for instance, uh, a professional, somebody, a coach like yourself or a professional counselor, um, would probably have them analyze themselves. How do, what do you think? The classic, what do you think about that? You know, what do you think you should do about that? That kind of, those kinds of questions to let mm. them come to their own decision making as opposed to what you just described as, or art described as unsolicited advice with, you ought to do this. Mm. Why don't you do that? Why don't you do it? Tell them this. Tell them. And it seems to me that um, th th there are many cases where people are either seeking advice or offering advice when instead a professional ought to be consulted. Yes. I mean, I think that can be, if you're really in a quandary about some decision, big decision, certainly like, you know, thinking about leaving a relationship, for example, or noticing that, you know, maybe that all your relationships are not going the way you want and you seem to have a similar path. Yeah, definitely. That's something to not um, talk. Well, we, we can talk about that later. I have some other ideas about that topic, about who to confide in if um, you're having some relationship issues, because it can be really personal, right? But but I think um, there's something about when, to, to, it sounds like if you want to help someone, you can also say, you know, it sounds like you're having a hard time with this. Is there some way I can help you in this? What would be helpful for me? Did you want to just list, you know, you could share the different sides of this decision, for example, if that's what they're grappling with. And maybe I could help you just listen and, and understand the different parts of it. Because if we're, if they take our advice and it goes well, then they're indebted to us. If they take it and it doesn't go well, then even though they took it and they're responsible, but they might feel angry at us, we might feel guilty. And um, it's just, there are different ways that that can just go off the rails. So well, I, I think it's better to, go ahead. I, I was going to say, I really like uh, the word help. I like that idea because when we give advice, we are offering, we're really offering to help. We're we're offering with a specific action. Why don't you do this? Exactly. Oh, you know what you ought to do. You ought to tell them such and such. You know, that that's trying to, the, the person offering the advice is really trying to help or they wouldn't be offering the advice mm. most of the time. So I like that. That's a great technique to offer advice mm. by way of offering help as opposed yeah. to, as opposed to a specific action. Right, right. And sometimes, you know, people offer advice to kind of, you know, one up one other person and to show off all their skills sure. and knowledge. And, um, you know, that's rather unattractive <laughs> to be yeah. around. Yeah. Um, I, I want to say, too, that like for myself with clients, it's rare that I would offer advice. I would say I probably never offer advice, actually. I might offer feedback. I might ask further questions. I might say, oh, why is it that you think that way about it? Do you think the person would be responsive to you if you brought that up? So I'd be, I, I'm kind of questioning, they might have conclusions that they've made, that they've closed an, you know, an option to talk about something with someone, let's say. And I might ask questions about, let's open that door. But that's, it's sort of like inviting them to think deep, more deeply about the situation and to help them uncover it for themselves. Because I mean, I don't want people to be, feel like they have to be coaching with me forever. I want them to get in and get out, you know, a couple of months, a year, whatever it might be, or 
you know, just to help them work with it themselves because then they, they build their own strength to do it again and their own confidence to know that they can navigate it and, and also navigate and be in uncertainty for a while because that's part of navigating is that sometimes we're not going to know and it doesn't mean we have to grasp for the life rest, life rest, life <laughs> best, <laughs> life ring, whatever, of, of help from someone else. And it might be in that that we, um, somebody's like compelled to give us advice, but it, it, you know, it's okay. We can, we can find our way. You know, I think the biggest takeaway from uh, uh, this conversation is that uh, uh, well, there, there are two. First of all, if you want to give somebody advice, uh, maybe you want to take a breath and find out, should you be giving it? How are they going to accept it? Okay. And if it's important enough for you to want to bring it up to somebody's attention, then perhaps you should find a way where it's uh, soliciting their uh, permission to give the advice, either by outright asking or asking, you know, you, you could start off by maybe saying, you know, is this something that um, you feel uncomfortable about uh, uh, the way the company uh, handles lunch hour, whatever it happens to be, uh, uh, or, uh, uh, you know, uh, who makes a decision, who's driving all the time, whatever it might be uh, between two people. Uh, although I do at this point, though, uh, given that we should ask, think about should we give it in the first place and then how we offer it. Uh, there is a, an exception to this rule in my lifetime uh, and many people's lifetime that it's never offer advice. It's you give advice and you either pay attention or there are consequences. And that I remember very clearly in boot camp. Uh, I spent 10 weeks uh, of not, never being asked my permission by the drill instructor if I wanted to hear how I could be a better uh, Marine, how I could uh, fire a rifle better. Okay, uh, hey, you bucket of whatever, that's how it was offered to me. Okay, this is what you're going to do. And you damn well better do it that way. So other than that one exception, I think uh, we should be more cognizant of uh, how advice is it necessary and how we offer that advice. Right, All right. This has been great, Michelle. Thank you so much. And as you mentioned, there's, there's more to talk about in this vein. So we'll do that sometime in the future. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.